Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you today to talk about uh, an exciting project uh, that really has the potential, I think, to impact all of our institutions uh, based on the, the progress that we believe we're making. Um, what it is, is a, a partnership between um, the Foothill De Enza Community College District. Again, Craig introduced me, I forgot to introduce myself. Uh, I'm the Vice Chancellor of Technology with the district. We're also partnered with West Valley Mission Community College District and a company called N2N Services uh, that has a product, an AI product called Light Leap. And if we could go to the next slide, um, what this Light Leap product is doing, we've been working to build an AI fraud detection model um, that can use uh, multiple uh, versions of, of AI language models and different pieces that are uh, part of the technology infrastructure to uh, really accomplish these objectives. Ultimately, we are trying to uh, use larger data sets to catch fraud at the application stage and through multiple uh, phases of a student's journey or a potential student's journey uh, through our colleges. So the, the overarching goal really is to save those seats for the students who need them, to protect our colleges uh, and our students and uh, the state, frankly, um, from the impact of fraud, uh, both application fraud, um, financial aid fraud and registration fraud as well. And ultimately we're creating a system that will increase its accuracy as it gets more data. Um, and the timing for this is launching uh, for the fall 2024 registration cycle. I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go forward. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, why did we choose this partner? Uh, one of the reasons that we chose to work with end-to-end -end services is because they are a primary partner on the California Virtual Campus uh, Initiative project. Um, their API infrastructure is already deployed at over 100 of our California community colleges. And therefore, the technical lift uh, in terms of implementing uh, a fraud detection API, the, the bar is just that much lower because they're already existing uh, in our technology environments. Uh, and so uh, at, at looking at something that could potentially scale, um, they're a global company with over 425 customers. They process over 3 million transactions per day. So we felt confident uh, in their ability to partner with us uh, on this journey. Next slide, please. Uh, so I wanted to talk just for a moment about what fraud detection looks like without AI, because that's generally where we are right now as a system and, and in our uh, districts. You can see here on the left, um, it's a very manual effort. We tend to look at data sets record by record. We look for patterns that we've uncovered uh, as fraudsters change their methodologies. Often they change them faster than we can adapt to them. Uh, and, and so it's a very manual process. Um, we do things like admissions checks, checking at the time of registration, uh, you know, application data coming from CCC Apply has been historically an issue. And we also look at the time uh, that financial aid is, is dispersed. And we see some patterns. Um, what we're really hopeful about and what we really expect to be a positive outcome of this project is that with AI and with the Lightly product, we will be able to identify fraud clusters that we really can't find as humans. It's really about accessing those large data sets and the way that um, the fraudulent activities and the fraudulent data clusters. And I'll talk on the next slide about that in just a minute. Um, we wanted to be very thoughtful about how to do this. And so we're implementing for fall um, still with human reviews. We didn't just go full AI, full automation um, because we want to be very mindful of potential false positives, right? We don't want to uh, negatively impact real students, but we want to catch the bad guys. And ultimately, we also want to ensure that the model that we're deploying, which we have a, a high um, level of confidence that it will be successful, we want to ensure that that model can learn and improve over time. Because the criminals are using AI against us, we need to have this in our arsenal to defend uh, our colleges and to help our students, our real students, uh, get the access that they need. Next slide, please. So without getting too overly technical on you all, um, there are a couple of kinds of clusters. I just wanted to give a few examples for you today. On the left side of this graphic, you'll see um, some of the more traditional kinds of clusters that the model's been able to uncover. 
These would be things like applications or registrations that have, you know, maybe the same IP address or the same home address or the same phone number or email address. Um, we've seen actually a remarkable ability for the model to help us detect those across a large data set. But what's probably more interesting is the graph, the piece on the right side of the graphic, which are these, these complex clusters where we might detect a number of applications with the same home address that then link to a number of applications that have the same email, but not all the same, that link then to, you know, it just, it goes on and on in terms of the linkages um, that the AI can do and can do almost immediately. So it's a really great opportunity for us. We see it as a great opportunity to implement a technology that should not present more barriers for our students. We don't wanna slow them down in becoming a student, registering for their classes, or worst of all, getting their financial aid access that they need. And so this is just a little bit about how the, the clusters work. Um, we've run uh, tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands now of records between our two districts through the model. Um, and we're really excited uh, about the potential here. If we could go to the next slide, please. So just at a very high level, um, how this works is in real time, um, the college or district can trigger an API that's uh, a modern uh, application interface that can send and, and receive data between applications. Um, it basically analyzes through uh, the AI models that are embedded and returns a, a fraud score or recommendation. This is either looks like it is fraud, looks like it's not fraud, or maybe something that needs some manual review. What's important and what goes further than what, uh, even further than what we're able to do manually right now is that it presents the reasons why. So those a &R technicians, those financial aid technicians, the folks who are on the front lines of trying to help our students don't have to play detective to try to understand why a record might be flagged. This uh, for Foothill Dienza will come up in our in internal fraud dashboard that we've developed. Um, and so we're really excited to provide some uh, relief to the folks who have been just day in and day out uh, scouring uh, our, our databases and our records for fraudulent activity. Next slide, please. Another thing that's really critical, I'm not going to read all of these bullet points, but what they illustrate is that this model is more than an initial detection model. It's actually a behavioral detection model. What that means in the simplest terms is we're not just looking at the application data. We're looking at the data footprint that a student or a student account uh, creates after application, after registration, after requesting financial aid, at the time of disbursement, at the end of a term, during an LMS uh, class, have they achieved a grade? Have they ever paid? We have a number of data points uh, that all feed into this model and give us a, a really um, great glimpse into not just kind of a static look that we have now, uh, but with the model, we'll be able to uh, analyze student behavior and have an even higher level of confidence and detect those shifts in methodology sooner because the AI model will help us with that. Next slide, please. So this is you know, sort of a funnel. If you were to look at 100% of fraudulent um, applications that come in um, with the Light Leap technology from end to end, we are able to detect more of those at the application stage. If you were to look at what's happening now, it's almost flipped, right? We have a lot of fraudulent applications coming in. We have to detect them at registration. We have to detect them at financial aid and FAFSA and, and all those other pieces. So we see this as a real um, benefit to our institutions to be able to hold those seats open so they don't fill with fraudulent students, right? Focus our staff's time on providing financial aid assistance to real students who actually need them and probably could use, in some cases, a little more personal guidance, right, from, from those staff. Um, and then, of course, we know some will slip through. Nothing is perfect, but uh, we believe over time that that accuracy will get even, even better. So, uh, next slide, please. And so this is really just uh, an idea of, you know, if these two districts coming together, working with an innovative partner are able to uh, deploy and we'll find out uh, here in the next couple of weeks. Um, the API was delivered last week. It's going into production this week for us. And as we start fall registration, 
um, we're going to know really quickly uh, how it works and how we can adapt and further improve the model so that uh, coming, you know, probably as soon as September, we'll have um, some really excellent data uh, that can potentially inform system-wide solutions if, if that's the uh, way that the chancellor's office and the board of governors would like to go. We wanna find the fraud once, have a way to identify it in multiple institutions so that each district, each college is not chasing, you know, sort of the same, the same folks. So just lastly, to wrap up on the next slide here, um, again, some of this I already mentioned, but our status is again, uh, into production in July. Um, looking at it through the fall cycle, uh, we want to be careful and we want to make sure that we formalize the results so that we have good data and, and good research behind this and then look at those opportunities to scale more broadly. With that, I will wrap up and uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them.